procedure in order to make our vertical accelerometer was basically by first starting off by drilling two holes that are 1.5 millimeters to 2 millimeters wide and we use a paper clip for these holes to put through to suspend the spring obviously because we or else because if we couldn't suspend the spring <laughs> then uh, we wouldn't be able to basically make our final product so first off as I just said we drill the holes and then we put a paper clip through to suspend the spring and then in order to find our G indicators, basically our acceleration due to gravity indicators. What I did was first I put it at rest and I put it at rest on a table like this and I, and I, without a mass obviously, and I marked it at zero because there's no mass being suspended and basically that, that, that gets marked as zero. And then once I put a mass, it extends to one, which means that one mass is there for the acceleration. And then in order to make my other two indicators, which is two G's and three G's, what I did was I got two other masses, which are basically the same. They are the same uh, equipment and they're roughly about the same height with a little bit of uncertainty. They're the same thing as what is found inside the tube. And uh, what I did was I hot glue gunned the, what, uh, sorry, the second mass onto this in order to find my second G. I did this because there's no other way to actually hook on both of these masses so it saved time and efficient, and it was very efficient as well. And then for a third one, I just uh, hot glued on that as well to, the, to all three of them. And then uh, I indicated that it went up to three and I marked it with a electrical tape. Okay, continue on to part three of the video. So, uh, after I got all my three different G indicators, I previously stated as well that I use electrical tapes just to mark it just in case if the sharpie went away or, or something happened like that and basically after that what I did was I finally glue gunned the top of the spring to the paper clip so it could stay there for a longer time and then super glue so it won't fall off and basically what I did for the, for the mass was if you could see I'm not sure if you can but hopefully you could I actually just, it's a, it's hooked, so there's a little loop that I just put it through and that made it secure and it's pretty sturdy which is good too. And the last step was electrical tape. The reason why I put electrical tape was so then the mass does not fall out and I did it at the top as well because it, it could, it could, anything could interfere with it and even if the super glue got loose, at least uh, no parts would come out like the mass as well. Uh, that's about it. So basically what we're going to do is test the accelerometer in the elevator. So this will be test one. Hopefully you both are fine. But it's okay. And we'll see you inside the elevator. So basically now what we're going to be in the elevator and we're going to test how the accelerometer actually works. So for now we're going to go on to the fifth floor. the same scenario but going downwards and uh, right now I am on the fifth floor so we're gonna be going down to the first floor and I'm obviously obviously uh, right in front of Gagin okay, so in a different spot. I'm currently going down. Alright, so from the experiment that we conducted at the hospital, what we found out was that as we're going up from ground level to the fifth floor, that the accelerometer or the weight, basically the sinker, it went from zero to about 0 0.8. So if we were to do that times by a 9.8, we'd probably get an estimate around 5.5 meters per second squared. So that's our average acceleration going ground level to the fifth floor. Okay, so uh, we were asked by our teacher, Ms. Ryan, who's probably watching right now, to actually explain how this is used in the real world and how we can explain it. So vertical accelerometers are those, well, they're like acceleration values that we can calculate from it that occur from a change in uh, direction. So up and down, obviously, because this is according to a vertical plane. It's not like a horizontal accelerometer where it just deals with the horizontal plane. So whenever you turn through a loop or a corner, for example, on a ride, or you undergo an, uh, any type of acceleration, to measure the acceleration due to change of uh, 
direction, we must use the vertical accelerometer, which is here, shown over here as well. Each line represents 1G, so 0G, 1G, 2G, and 3G. And I already explained on how I got these values. And basically, it's like a gravitational force, obviously, because it's 1G. G stands for gravitational acceleration force. And it's equal to the pull of gravity, every G. So 9.8 meters per second squared. So uh, since gravity pulls you on a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, the first represents 0 Gs, and then first is 1. And then uh, when you see 0 Gs, you're basically in a state of free fall. Okay, so test two. of our project so basically what we're going to do is we're going to test our um, accelerometer within the elevator pause it, pause it. oh my okay so as you can see <laughs> yo so as you can see from our elevator test <laughs> I, as you can see <laughs> all right all right <laughs> It was!